on staying with us long, Mr. Cartwright? Nope. Leaving soon, I take it. Mm-hmm. Tin Bucket's a nice town. Said Tin Bucket's a nice town. Yes, I heard you. How do you like River Bend? Oh, River Bend's a nice town. Mm, that smells good. Hey, you took some cattle up there. Mm. Hundred head, a lot of cattle. Just you and the boys? Yep. You're a long way from the Ponderosa. What you doing in Tin Bucket? Going back to the Ponderosa. I'll raise five. Hombre, que pasa? I'm bluffing. This I do not believe. Well, I guess that just leaves it to us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Parker. Compliment. Yeah, you are. Keep the change. Thank you. Yes, it sure is a pleasure and a privilege doing business with the Cartwrights. Well, heard a lot about you. Oh. Just sorry to hear about you falling on hard times. Hard times? Would you hear that? Oh, uh, here and there, and just sort of running about. Well, things couldn't be better, Mr. Tingle. There's horse. What's he talking about? I don't know. Hey, horse! Oh! There you are. He got here, good. Yeah. I know, man. Well, you sure, you sure smell good. I'm sorry, I can't say the same about you. Well, all day on the trail with a wagon load of hides, what do you expect? Well, did you have any trouble getting those hides together? Listen, boy, what kind of deal did you make on him hides in a place like this the last minute like this? Oh, some of the highs for a fellow by the name of Amos Parker. He telegraphed us while we were still in River Bend, said he was willing to pay top dollar for the highs if we could deliver them here. So I telegraphed you. You know this Parker from someplace? Yeah, I did some business with him about oh, nine, ten years ago. So if you had a cab, nothing important. We're just fixing to meet him now. Come along. No, I think I'll get a bath to shave. I'll That's see you later. That's a good idea. I'll huh? <laughs> we'll see you in the saloon. All right. Take your time. I'll see you. I raise you 20. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll call you. Kind of reckless, weren't you, Rice? With the luck I've been having. Hold it right there. I want to make sure you got a right to that money before I give it to you. Somebody look in his pockets. What's he got in his pockets that you're so worried about? Well, why don't you look and see? Put it away. All right, son, stand up. Those aren't my cards. I don't know where they came from. That is your pocket, ain't it? You're working this deck. These two here and three you got in your hand. I count five kings. They're not my cards. Mr. Carrie, they say I've been cheating. Have you? No. These are not my cards.
I don't know where the cards came from, Mr. Cartwright. I'm afraid the sheriff found them in his pocket. My name is Parker, Mr. Cartwright. Yes. Oh. oh, we have some business to discuss. Yes, we do. Just as soon as I enter this. Mr. Cartwright, I don't know how the cards got in my pocket. Do you know this man? Yes, he works for me. A card sharp works for you? Not a card sharp. He's a cow hat and a very good one. <laughs> well, it's a cinch he ain't a very good card sharp. If I hadn't have been here, he'd have probably got himself shot. I'll have to give these men the money that's here on the table. No! Easy, Candy. I've got $25 in this game. Go on, divide it up, fellas. Get your money. Well, I'm the biggest loser. $59. My money is easy to find. I got it water soaked swimming my horse across the river. Hard earned, too. Hate to lose it to a card shop. I appreciate what you've done, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like to thank you. Thank you, too, Sheriff. I'd be more careful who I played cards with in the future. Well, I... I ought to throw you in jail. Sheriff, uh, I'll be responsible for him. Well, get him out of town. Well, we'll all be leaving just as soon as I complete my business, if that's all right. All right. Joe Wright heard on Candy, will you? Candy, I'll be up in a Buy a drink? Oh, uh... no, 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 thank you. We can just sit down and get our business out of the way. Oh, how do you guys been treating? <clears throat> Can't complain. No, you've been very successful. How about yourself? <laughs> well, uh, had my uh, ups and downs. I guess more downs than ups, but you know, all in all, uh, done pretty well. Good. How's Mrs. Parker? Alice? <laughs> you remember her? <laughs> well, how is she? She's, uh... Bill. Well, she's dead, Mr. Cartwright. What happened about a year ago? Fell from her horse. And... I'm sorry. Well, uh, misfortune happens to all of us, I guess. Yes. Yes, I've had my share. Yes, so I hear. I understand that you had... A lot of hard luck lately. What do you mean? Well, the business, uh, debts, um, something about your credit wasn't... Uh... Who told you that? I don't know exactly. I mean, it's just common knowledge. <laughs> it sure is common knowledge. Even the barber mentioned it. Well, isn't it true? Of course not. Look, my son Horace has brought in a wagon load of hides, and there'll be two more wagons on their way. Oh, fine, fine, because... I want to discuss price with you. No, oh, you quoted the price in the wire you sent me. Yes, and I, I know I did, but some things have happened, and I, I can't uh, come up with the money that I quoted to you in the wire. I can really only pay half now. Well, maybe you'd like an hour or so to think about it. No, I, uh, I don't need any more time to think about it. I, I've probably taken up too much of your time as it is. I think I'll be on my way. So we can't do business? Yes, I, I am too. Good day, Mr. Parker. I don't care about the money. What's killing me is you believe them and not me. The sheriff believed them. It's a two-bit sheriff in a two-bit town. Two-bit sheriff or not? Put us in his gunnery and saw the bars in his jail and he was gonna throw you behind them or kill you if you try to fight him. Did you believe me about the cards? Say somebody planted them in your pocket. Yeah, that's right. When? 
While you were playing? I'm not that stupid. I when? I don't know. When I went in, there were a lot of people at the bar. They were shoving at me. Who? Did you know any of them? No, I didn't know any of them. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, why don't we get the money for the highs and get out of this town? You can't. Parker says he'll only pay half price for those hides. Well, you're not going to let him get away with it, huh? No, I'm not going to let him get away with it. Now, have Hoss take those hides back to the Ponderosa and head off the two wagons at Pine Creek. I want you to go with him. All right. Got more horse over the blacksmith shop. We'll get him. Candy? Let's go see the sheriff. Hi, Billy. Sure is hot. You ought to slow down a little bit. Can't I got all this work to do? Well, a cold sarsaparilla sure would taste good right now. It would for a fact. You buying or mine? <laughs> I'm always broke. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy if you go get them, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, where's your axle grease? I need to agree to wheel. Inside there on the shelf. Fine, thank you. Now, what I'm trying to say is I ain't gonna sit around and let nobody turn this town into a three-ring circus. And nobody's intending to do that. I'm trying to clear my name, Gant. Sheriff Gant. I'm gonna have to do something about that squeak one of these days. I think every man has a right to clear his name, Sheriff. That man of yours can just thank his lucky stars that all I did was take that poker money away from him. Now, he can't stay in town and he can't come back after he leaves. Why don't you just sell them hides and all of you get out of town? I'm not selling my hides. You mean you come all this way up here and you ain't gonna sell? What are you trying to do, hold Parker up on them hides? Parker, cut the price. Parker, I think, is trying to drive a hard bargain himself. Well, maybe he's offering you all them hides is worth. They're top grade hides. Now, look here, Mr. Cartwright. All of us get pressed to the wall sometime or another, but, well, why don't you just sell them hides and, and go on home? I know that, well, you've been a rich man for a long time, but you gotta face it. You're broke. He's not broke. Now, look here, young fella. I've taken all the jaw off you that I'm a going to. You can just shut your mouth and get out this door. And if either one of you or any of that crew of yours so much as looks sideways the rest of the time that you're in town, I'll throw you in jail so fast it'll make your head swim. Now get out of here. Got him ready yet? I did the one shoe. I thought I'd clean him up all around for you. Good enough. Hey, that's a right pretty horse you got there, mister. You interested in selling him? You couldn't afford what this horse is worth. Oh, I thought maybe you'd let him go cheap. Hard up the way you are. And it says I'm hard up. Well, how else are you going to figure it? You hired hands after cheated poker to make a living. <laughs> Go on, get it finished. Virginia City Bank. And you want $5,000 cleared here to our bank? That's right. It's a lot of money to try to borrow by telegraph, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not borrowing the money. The money's mine. I just want to transfer it to the bank here. Would you please send that? What's the matter? The line's gone dead. Try it again. Well, I said it ain't working. There's nothing we can do but wait. Maybe there's something wrong at the other end. You think it was cut at the other end? Why it can be cut at either end? Come on. If the wire's been cut, it's one of you done it. Well, it took you long enough. A couple more minutes and I'd have been on my way. Well, had to go to two saloons to find cold ones. Ah, that's good.
driving a team drunk in a skunk. Here, take a rest of it. Hey, what are you doing? Just helping him finish his food. He's been hit on the head, Pa. Yes, I know. He's drunk in a skunk. Looks like you went broke in more ways than one, Mr. Cartwright. He wasn't drunk. He wasn't drunk. Clean this mess up. Get them hides back on that wagon and get off the street. Look, give me a hand with this wagon. I'll pay you. I don't need pay to help a man in need of help. I just heard about what happened. Seems like hard luck is dogging you, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm sorry. Why? Old time's sake, I guess. Look, Mr. Cartwright, I don't like to take advantage of a man, especially when he's down and out. Parker, don't concern yourself about being down and out. I'm not. Whatever you say. Anyway, I'll buy these hides from you for, for three quarters of the price we said. That does it, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Daly. What do you say? <sighs> All right. Three quarters of the price we agreed on. All right. I'll write you a check for the full amount on the bank here at Tin Bucket. If you don't mind, I'll have to verify that account. Of course not. Bank? Just over here? Yes, I know. Mr. Hollis, I'd like to ask you a question. The I... Bank of Tin Bucket is always ready to answer questions, Mr. Cartwright. No, no, thank you, thank you. And your question? Well, uh, Mr. Amos T. Parker has an account in this bank, I understand. Yes, he has. Well, what I'd like to know is, is the account large enough to cover a check in excess of $1,000? Oh, you'll have to bring in the check before I can answer that question. Well, I'd like to know if the check is good before I accept it. Well, well. I suppose it is reasonable that a man in financial difficulties would doubt everyone else. Where'd you hear that? Your financial problems are common gossip. And I'll not give out privileged information concerning our more successful clients. Mr. Cartwright, you expect me to buy those hides? Now, what's the matter with the hides? Look at the brand. What about it? Ponderosa brand? Well, turn it over. What do you call that brand? Bar E. Uh, can you prove that that steer was legally yours before the brand was done? Mr. Parker, I've never worked over a brand in my life. Old bail of them was found on your wagon. That's the last. That's the way of it, Mr. Cartwright. A full bail of them. You believe I'd deal in stolen hides? Well, if you're as broke as they say you are, you just might. What about that big kid of yours? What about him? Well, what's to prevent him from going into business for himself? Oh, come on. Even if you wasn't broke, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time that some rich man's kid went and stole something just for the pleasure of stealing it. 
Do you believe that? Huh? Well, after what's happened today, you just tell us something we can believe. I'm going to check with the bar E, and if they've had any cattle stolen, you and that boy of yours are going to have to stand trial. If Hoss brought those hides, then he has clear title to them. And if he ain't got clear title to them... Then he didn't bring them. Somebody else put them in the wagon after he got here. Oh, somebody else put them in the wagon. Who'd do something like that? Yeah, give us some answers. Who and why? I don't know who or why, but I'll find out. I left Hoss with Candy. Couldn't get a doctor. He's still unconscious. Can you explain those stolen hides, Cartwright? Now, you stay out of it. Hey, you can shut me up, Sheriff. But you can't hide the fact that Cartwright's been stealing Bar E cattle. What are you talking about? Your father's a thief. Lucky that Cartwright started the fight, or you'd be paying the damage. You know how much this is going to cost you? No, I don't. But whatever it is, I'll be very happy to pay it. Here. For $100 in here, that should be enough for two of those windows. Here. My money. It's gone. I had it a minute ago, just before the fight started. Hold on, son. Let me see it. It's mine. It's water soap. I know it's yours. It's been a long time since we've had a pickpocket in town. Now look, I didn't take that money. Well, of course you didn't. Well, you saw me find it in his pocket, didn't you? I saw you take it out of his pocket. Well, I reckon it wouldn't be the first time when a man ever started a fight so he could pick somebody's pocket. You can't let him get away with it this time, Sheriff. You got a risk. I'm going to. Will you swear out a warrant? You bet your life I will. All right, come on, son. Keep going. Seems like you got two boys that you don't know much about, Mr. Cartwright. One of them's a pickpocket, and the other one's a cow thief. You're wrong on both counts. Oh? Well, the evidence says I'm right. How's that make you feel? Well, the evidence and you are both wrong, Sheriff. You sure do take a lot of convincing, don't you? Oh, do you want to bail him out? It'll cost you $500. Well, I haven't got $500. I didn't think so. With me. Oh, now don't you try leaving town. You do, and I'll come after you with a posse. And that uh, wagon load of hides is impounded. Leave it alone. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen a man out like this before. You think he's all right? Yeah, he's all right. His pulse is regular. Breathing is, is normal. I don't know what they doped him with. Whatever it is, he's doing a good job. There's no doctor in this town. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you believe those cards were planted on me in the saloon? I'm sure they were. What makes you so sure? You said they were. That's good enough for me. Thanks. What I keep asking myself is why? Yeah. Why? with the cards planted on you. There was the money planted on little Joe. 
Why did this happen? All part of some kind of plan, isn't it? What are we going to do? I'm going to wait until I can talk to Horse. i got to find out whether those hides, those blotched hides, they came with the Ponderosa. You think there's some chance they did? Well, Hoss filled the wagon with some of his own hides. He may have a better sale for them. But more than likely, the hides came from stolen cars and they were switched here in town. But I can't go looking for hours until I talk to Hoss. One thing I can do, though. You start proving you're not broke. Look, I'm gonna give you this site draft for $5,000. I want you to take this to the Bank of Virginia City. And also this note asking for a letter of credit. But you get back with the cash and that letter just as soon as you possibly can. I feel a little funny about leaving you here alone with Hoss like this. I'll manage. You take these and get back as soon as you can, though. All right, I'll be back for you now. Hi. Well, she might be getting hungry. food is somebody to listen to sense. Ah, I'm always happy to listen to somebody. Ah, hey, you're gonna like that stew. That's muskrat stew. I caught him myself. Look, Sheriff, I, I am not a pickpocket. There's a man swore out a warrant says you are. Hey, well, the only way that money could have gotten in my pocket was if he put it there, that fellow Rice. Now, what did a feller want to do a thing like that for? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Your stew's going to get cold. Yeah, not, uh, not that hungry, thanks. Well, sure ain't no reason letting it go to waste. You know, an old mountain man taught me how to make this stew. He learned how to fix it from a youth woman. I reckon I'm the only man in the world knows how to cook this stuff now. Look, Sheriff, I don't have to pick pockets. My brother Hoss doesn't have to steal cattle, and our ranch hands don't have to cheat at cards. Is that a fact? Yeah, that's a fact. We happen to be a very prosperous family. You're going to find that out tomorrow. Then how come your old man couldn't raise a measly $500 to bail you out? Well, he'll raise it tomorrow. Don't you worry about that. How do you think you're going to look to the rest of this town when they find out that whole story was just made up about us? Kind of stupid, don't you think? It don't make no difference how much money you got. It's like I said, I reckon you wouldn't be the only rich kid that ever liked to steal. I don't like to steal, and I don't steal. I remember this kid uh, over here with three forks. Old man run, uh, run and dub you. Nicest little spread you ever saw. Sheriff, if you... Yeah, now, this kid, uh, I think his name was Doby or Dobbs or... I can't remember just exactly what it was. But he liked to steal. Steal anything and is loose at both ends. Just pack it off. But five cent piece of candy, $50 horse, he had to steal it. I reckon I had him in jail the old... I don't know how many times. Couldn't cure him. Finally, his old man made him join the cavalry. They sure cured him there. Hey, did you ever think of joining up? Hmm? The cavalry. Did you ever think of joining the cavalry? Pay ain't too good, but it sure beats the heck out of being in jail. Well, I'll give it some thought. Uh, why don't you think about this? Just think about all the things that have happened since we've been in this town. That's an awful lot of trouble for one family. Don't you think there's something wrong with that? How's that? I said, don't you think there's something wrong with that? Yeah, I reckon. Uh, maybe it got a little too much salt in it.
it took you so long getting here. Did Billy get out of town? You didn't think he was going to stick around. Horse Cartwright will wake up any time now. When he does, he'll tell his father it was Billy who switched the hides. I'm pulling out. Not now you're not. Not this close to the end. Whose? Cartwright's or mine? The more I see of him, the less I like the whole business. He's not dumb. He doesn't quit. And he just doesn't scare. Sounds to me like you're the one running scared. I don't care what it sounds like to you. I didn't pay you the kind of money I did just to see you walk away. You know how much this means to me. How I've planned it. How hard I've worked. It means nothing to me. Does this mean anything to you? Depends. How much? Well, just above to it. Only if it means the end of car, right? You got yourself a deal. Let's go. Where to? Stable. That's the first place Ben Cartwright will go, looking for those hides. You sure? I'm sure. See you found them. Get up. I said get up. I'll throw your gun over here. Very easy. Oh, I'm glad you found your hides. I figured you would. Why'd you switch them? For the same reason I had Rice plant those cards on your ranch hand? For the same reason I made your son look like a thief? My other boy like a drunk. That's right. Now I got the whole town thinking you're broke. This is a balancing of the books, Mr. Cartwright. A final accounting. Well, you destroyed my life. Now I'm going to destroy yours. I sold you... I sold you a few head of cattle years back. How could that destroy your life? You're forgetting one thing, my wife. All the times you met with my wife. My what? That's right. I met your wife once in my life. You invited me to dinner to your place, you invited me yourself. You don't have to lie, I'm not stupid, you know. I'm not lying, it's the truth. I, 
I never saw... What made you... What gave you the idea I ever saw your wife again? It was obvious. Well, how can anything be obvious if it never happened? And how can you believe such a thing? Well, I believed it. I knew. Oh, well, she was clever, though. She had excuses for everything. All her little trips and all the things she'd bring back. Presents from you. Well, I knew. I knew she was meeting with you. She loved you, Mr. Cartwright. Rich Ben Cartwright. Big and successful Ben Cartwright. My wife is in love with you. No, I never saw your wife after that first time. Now, that's the truth. Oh, she used to deny it, too, for a long time. She said she didn't want things like money and fine clothes, big house and position. Said she wasn't interested in them. That's not quite the way it was. In fact, it wasn't like that at all. I know because I forced the truth out of her. You know what she said? She said, yes. Yes, I love Ben Cartwright. Is that what you want to hear? I love him, I love him, I love him. Are you satisfied now? Well, those were her very words. Now, Parker, I don't know where you got any of these ideas, but there was never anything between your wife and me. I never saw her after that first time. You forced her into admitting to something that wasn't so. Now she's dead. Now she's dead. Had an accident. That's right. Fell off a horse. Yeah, hit her head on a rock. Did she? She hit her head on a rock? Mm-hmm. Well, could it be that when she finally said all those things that you wanted her to say, that you forced her to say, did you pick up a rock and bash her head in, kill her? Kill her for no good reason at all, did you? I had a reason, a good reason. And she couldn't lie out of it, and neither will you. I'm going to hang you, Mr. Cartwright. Now, a rock was good enough for her. For you. Rope. This Mr. Cartwright. Don't shoot him! We have to hang him! I don't want him tied. I'll cut him loose once he's swing. You should have had me in here instead of waiting outside. That's all right. Cartwright, you're going to hang yourself. Because you're a failure, remember? And what's worse, you've discovered that your sons are rotten. Well, one's a pickpocket, other a cattle thief. The good people at Tin Bucket already believe that you're broke and in debt, got no credit. They believe your sons are rotten. And you couldn't stand the disgrace, and so you hanged yourself. And the word will travel, and for years to come, you're going to be known as a broken and a disgraced man of suicide.
Thank you. that little skitty yours. I was helping him eat his supper a little bit ago, and he kept a jawing at me. And, and later on, I got to thinking, well, maybe he is right. It didn't seem like an awful lot to have happen to a family unless somebody was helping it along. So I just got to nosing around and... Uh... got no fight left in him. It's everything, even the killing his wife. Well, best that way. What about Rice? He ain't gonna be walking around for a while. Maybe a year or more. Can't say I'm sorry. Well, I can't say as I blame you. You come on back anytime. You're always welcome. Yeah. in this way. Yeah, this must be the tenth time that little heifer's run off. Well, I'll find him. Ah, uh, you going back and rest. I may get her and cook her for supper. Yeah, too little. Shock wagon sure gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. See ya. You know that brand. Drop your gun. Get off the horse. I'm sure we can solve it without using these. Chico, hey. Angelo. It would be a mistake to kill that man there. Woman, do not get in the way. You know the winter was hard. We need food, not a woman's foolish talk. I don't speak as a squaw. I've dreamed of the wolf, and the great prophet of the Paiute knows my name. We were sent to find the horses that graze these mountains. Two of us are on foot already. I left the herd a day's ride to the north, and I have spare horses. Those two are broken to the white man's taste, but they're yours if you'll have them. 
The last one isn't broken yet. But I'd like to trade him to you for that heifer. Well, ma'am, that's not a very good trade, but you got a deal. You know, are we near Cartwright land? You're on it, ma'am. I'm Horse Cartwright. Well, I've heard that the Cartwrights are honorable men and friends of the Paiute. I was on my way to your ranch to sell my horses. I did not know who you were. No harm done. Would you trade more beef for the horses that they'll catch? Absolutely. You get them, send word to me at our roundup camp, and I'll meet you back here and we'll discuss the details. I am called Bear Hunter. You are welcome at our camp anytime. gone a bit sore. No, no. How'd you uh, injure that shoulder, anyhow? Well, to tell you the truth, I got a bit careless trying to break that horse. I got myself thrown. It's just a cut, but uh, I think it might be trying to get infected. You know, we might ought to have a doctor take a look at that. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. And the nearest one's in Virginia City. Well, I don't, uh, I don't think I could make it that far right now. Well, we can't camp here, and that's for sure. It'll be freezing here in another hour or so. We can go on down to Low Country. I know a good place to camp down there. Well, I'll be grateful to you for the company, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Miss O'Donnell, my name is Hoss. Aaron. Here, you rest a spell. I'll go fill this candy and then we'll be on our way. Fine. Shoulder bother me? A little. How hard did that old pony throw you, anyhow? Not hard enough to break anything, but I don't think I'll be forgetting them for a while. <laughs> oh, man, no. Listen, I'll fix something to eat. It ain't gonna be too tasty, but it'll be filling. I got some jerky and some beans back here. Well, wait, wait. Why don't I just try to catch us a dinner? Like what? Pheasant or quail or both. Well, that's fine with me, but I ain't seen nothing running or flying. Well, it never hurts to try. That's going to be interesting. Is there anything I can do to help? Just keep your fingers crossed. Oh. Hey. Oh. Let me take a look at the shore. <sighs> Boy. <sighs> that thing ain't infected. It's sure trying. You know, maybe we shouldn't stop. Maybe we ought to keep going, huh? Well, I don't think my horse is up to it. I've been pushing him pretty hard. The fact is, I, I'm i not up to it. Yeah, well, you sure can't go out catching any game, that's for sure. Well, it doesn't take much muscle to set a snare. Huh. We're going to need a fire. Right. I'm aiming for Sue Stew. Sue Stew? What's that? Rabbit. Oh. Of that jerky, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, this is the first coffee I've had since mine ran out last winter, and it smells like nectar. You said you wintered with the pilot. You lived with Indians all your life? Only the best part of it. Did the Sioux take you when you were a baby? 
Uh, no, no, I was, um, I was taken to the zoo as a child by my father. Well, when my mother died, he had no idea how to go about raising a daughter. So he raised me like a son. I took to it like a duck to water. I still do, I guess. Why did, uh, why did your Paul take you to the zoo? Well, he was looking for freedom. And when he discovered the zoo, he thought he'd found it. It's funny, I never thought of freedom as being that hard to come by. My parents had to pay a price for it. You see, they were raised in Ireland under the British occupation. You were born in Ireland? Mm -mm. No, I was born on a ship. They wanted the first land I'd see to be a free one. And then we came ashore at Massachusetts, and there was a sign in every window saying, no Irish need apply. So we headed west. <laughs> How did you get with the pilot? And what's this thing about a prophecy or whatever it was? I've been talking too much. You're good company, Hoss. I'll just take these down and clean. Here. Here. Oh. Hey, you got a fever. Come on, Aaron. Get in. It's all right. You're going to have to get some rest. Come on. It's really all right, Hoss. I just hope it's not too late yet. Fix this bed down for you. I'll get it. I'll get it. Just take it easy. Relax. Thank you. Here. I'll be fine. I really will be fine. All right? Yes, listen. Let me get you some cover. You don't have to I... keep that night air off. There. That'll keep the chill off. I promise you, if it is a fever, it'll be gone by the morning. I hope so. Thank you, Hoss. You get some rest. Red man, white man. Red blood, white snow. Aaron. Aaron. You're gonna be all right. You hear? You're gonna be all right. I'll, I'll get you to a doctor. I'm not glad to see you, Paul. Who's she? Her name's Erin O'Donnell. What is she, some kind of white Indian? What happened to her? She got bucked off by a horse. She's got an infected shoulder. It's bad. She's running a high fever. I guess she needs a doctor or a medicine man. Oh, shut up. Give me a hand. Gotta get her to a doctor. <laughs> How is she? I'm sure she's felt better. She sleep? You ever try to sleep through having a shoulder cauterized? She survived that. Now she's got to beat the fever. What do you think, Doc? We'll know by morning, one way or the other. I'll send my wife out to stay with her tonight. Someone should be with her. I'll go on up there right now. If she gets through this, she'll be laid up for a while.
Hello, friend. Hello, yourself. I've caused you a great deal of trouble. Oh, you're not to be sorry about it. Don't be silly. The main thing is you get some rest and get to feeling better. I've forgotten how good linen feels next to your skin. I wonder if you'd open the window just a little. Erin, it's... It's a fever that's making you feel uncomfortable. It's, it's, I don't think you need the draft. It's not the fever. It's just being closed in. The fact is, I just don't like being closed in. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it this time. Us, if you don't do it, I will. Hey, wait a minute. Settle down. I'll open the window. That, that settle it. Say, you've got a mind of your own, haven't you? Oscar, right? What an uncommon man you are. How have you managed to survive in this savage world? I'll go and change. I hope I remember how to put this on. Oh, come in, Mrs. Murray. Afternoon, Ben. Afternoon. How? Hi, Hi, Mary. How are you? Well, well, awesome. Well, I'd like you both to meet my niece, Mary Beth Johnston. Hi, Mary. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky. Mary Beth's going to be visiting us for a month or so. Well, isn't that nice for you? Uh, sit down, ladies. Please. Oh, thank you, Ben. Come on, Mary Beth. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, you ladies. Like some coffee? Well, that'd be real nice, huh? Oh, uh, Ben. Uh, I... Isn't Joseph here? No, no, he's with the Rhonda. Oh, I'd so hope Mary Beth could meet both your sons. Ben. And he oh, says uh... your other son's name is Little Joe. Well, I think that's just darling. Yeah, well, you'll meet him sometime. Right now, I got to talk over some business with Ben. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the roundup, is it? No, no, it's coming along fine. And uh, if we want it to stay that way, we got to decide what we're going to do about those Paiutes. Paiutes, we were near here. Besides that, they're you're just after some wild horses, anyhow. They'll come back. They've had a taste of good beef, and they'll come back for more. Unless we let them know that they're not wanted. Clint, you're making a mountain out of a mole here. We haven't had any Indian trouble here for a long time. That's what my brother thought, until he and his family were wiped out at Brinker's Ford. Oh, Aaron. Miss O'Donnell, this is Mr. and Mrs. Murray and their niece, Miss Johnson. I do. It's a pleasure, I'm sure. How'd you do? I think we better talk privately. Come on. Come on, have a seat. Well, that's a nice little dress. You make it yourself, my dear? No, I, uh... Never mind. A few little alterations here and there, and it'll do nicely. Well, I'm afraid I don't know how to sew. You should be grateful to the Cartwrights for giving you a chance to return to civilization. Well, I am very grateful to the Cartwrights. But I came here from as old a civilization as your own. And an honorable one. I uh, suppose those shoes are... comfortable. Oh, yes, very, very. Is it true you all have to... Chew the leather soft to make them comfy? Sometimes. As it happens, these were a gift from my uncle. Your uncle? 
Yes, Bull Buffalo. He was a Sioux medicine man. Oh. It must be very difficult for a white girl to uh, protect herself among people who buy and sell women like animals. Miss Murray. No, it's not hard. When young men brought strings of war ponies as a bride price, my father had only to turn them down politely. My father never had to depend for an income on how many horses he could trade for me. How fortunate for your father. <laughs> Come along, Mary Beth. Yes, ma'am. Good day. Goodbye, ma'am. Clinton? I would like to go home. <laughs> oh, Haas, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. For her. <laughs> I saw the way Haas looked at her. She's got him wrapped right around her little finger. She wouldn't mind marrying one of the Cartwrights, that's for a fact. You probably don't mind having a bunch of Indians hanging around your place, but... It sure makes it hard on my family. Well, I'm real sorry, Mr. Murray. But if Oz wants it that way, that's exactly the way it's going to be. Well, I'm glad you can laugh. You weren't upset by them. Oh. Paul, she can take care of herself. Don't you worry about that. Well, darling people my father would have called the Murrays. They're the kind that would have enjoyed the Sandy Wash massacre. Yeah. Indian women and children shot, bodies left in the snow. What a needless tragedy that was. I turned and left the Dakotas. I ran like a thief. I'd best go up and rest. Well, you must be tired. Yeah. We'll call you for dinner. Oh, thanks again for the dress. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I forgot about the shoes. I like these shoes. But Murray won't do so secret. Oh, you know Murray. Yeah. Sees Paiutes under every rock. No, no. He just saw the whole Paiute nation riding over the hill on poor war paint. Hey, there was a bear hunter and a couple of other braves now. I know, I know, but he thinks she's going to bring a whole lot more around. Well, Aaron was raised with the Sioux and wintered with the Pirates, so it's understandable that a few of them may come around to say hello or something, but Murray can't really believe that they're going to put together a war party, can he? Oh, yes, yes, he believes that, and he thinks that they're going to steal all our beef, and he just can't forget what happened at Brinkus Ford when he lost part of his family, and but that's only half my concern. The other half is Aaron. She's all right, Paul. But for whatever reason, she ran away from the Dakotas. She left the Piutes. And now the first time she meets anybody outside our family, she runs into hatred and prejudice. And... You think you, you think she might try to run away again, huh? Well, once you start running, it gets easier every time. I'll tell you this. She tries. I'll do everything I can to keep her from it. I'm not surprised. Hoss, don't you be surprised if you wind up being hurt. Paul, I know you're concerned, but you needn't be. I know how I feel, and I know what I want. And what's troubling you? Well, it's not what Murray and them like him think of her, but it's what she thinks of us that concerns me. Hey, listen, Aaron. You looked at a lot of horse flesh, but that little pony of yours is one of the prettiest ones I ever saw. That is the best horse that I ever stole. Stole? Well, I stole his mother when she was in foal with him from a crow's camp. That's when the Sioux gave me the cool feathers that you saw, as a sign that I had medicine. But speaking of medicine, you never did tell me about that prophecy. What was that all about? The prophet said that I was the wolf's child, born to fight and die for the Indians. Do you 
you believe that? When I was with the Sioux, I did. But now I'm not so sure. What are you sure of? I'm sure of one thing. I'm tired of being a curiosity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm sure you do. When I look at you, I see a man with wisdom, of great strength, who prefers to be gentle. on moving straight ahead. Instead of up and down, you'll get where you want to go faster. Oh, that's funny. That's very funny. That may not be the meanest jughead I've ever seen, but he'll do. Well, maybe you haven't appealed to his better nature. Oh, is that what you did? Just before he threw you? You made your point. But it did give me time to consider my mistake. I think I got his number now. Oh, would you mind letting me in on it before he kills me? You might be able to talk me into it. Well, my father got along with the Sioux very well. Probably because he never tried to change them. Hmm. Well, what did you folks do when the Sioux were moved to the reservation? Well, my father had died by then, and I, uh, I started horse hunting. There's something you got a right to know. I was arrested by the army after the Brinker's Fort raid. They put you in jail? Oh, no. Into a hospital star room. Manacle to a cot. No windows. No light. No air. And what charge? I never did know exactly. I never saw a courtroom or a jury or a judge or the officer who ordered it. I think it had something to do with the prophecy. Well, they had no legal right. I was in no position to argue the point, Mr. Cartwright. Excuse me, please. I'm going to look in on Jughead. It ain't hard to figure out why she don't like being cooped up, is it? She hardly touched a dinner. Yeah. I reckon she can't get her mind off the little hungry youngins in the Paiute camp. Yeah. Although it's spring, there should be plenty of game for food. Oh, yeah, small game. That ain't enough to feed a tribe, no, just rabbits. What if? If we're that short of food in the mountains, we may be in for some serious trouble. Well, we're that short. Of course, they got the cattle that they'll get from the horse trade, but that ain't enough either. I wish you could feed them all. Yeah. Well, I think I'll go ahead and see how she's doing with that gray jug head. Well, is it great that she trade you for the habit? Yeah. You better stay away from him. Candy says he'll chew your arm off. Let's go out and see if she's all right. Figuring on taking a little night ride? No, I'm just getting acquainted. I've been working with him a little every day. There's 
music a part of your system of getting acquainted? I mean, you were whistling. Well, I guess it is. Sort of a catchy little tune. Is it Irish? I... When I was a child, we'd sit by our fire in the evenings, and my father used to sing all the old songs. And the rolling hills of Ireland would spring up before my eyes. That's... Uh... Downright poetic. You should have heard my father. He was a teacher and a proper poet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've always had a real tough time with words. It's, as a matter of fact, I'm having a heck of a time right now. There's something I need to tell you. Boss. And it's, well, what I'd like to say is... Boss. Don't be confused by a pretty spring day. Oh, I, I ain't confused, and I, I hope you're not. Even in a dress, I don't fit in your world. Aaron, let me tell you something. You ain't exactly the best judge in the world of how a man feels, and particularly this one. I think you're as pretty as a picture in that dress. And you will fit in my world just fine. I don't know, Hoss. I just don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like Nightwind. I've always run free. I mean, he, he's never even been in a stall before, nor on a picket line. Aaron. I mean, not even at night. All I'd ever have to do was waken up and turn and he'd be there. Aaron. Even when it was so dark, I could hardly see him. I think that's why I called him night. Aaron, please. There's something I gotta tell you and, and you gotta listen to me. I wanna protect you. And I wanna look after you. And I wanna make sure that nothing ever happens to you again like happened up in the Dakotas. I wanna... I wanna be near you and with you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Boss, I was looking for your paw, but as long as you're here, I'll talk to you. And no apology for interrupting. What do you want, Mr. Murray? I just saw a stinking Paiute skulking around the Roundup camp, Hoss. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk, Mr. Murray. I invited that Indian here. We're going to trade him some beef for some horses. You're a fool, Hoss. My best advice, I think, to you is to go on home. Well, maybe, uh, maybe this will interest you. Wired a friend of mine in the cavalry up the Dakotas about this O'Donnell woman. My well, man, she's, she's an insurrectionist. She's a traitor. She, she's worse than a squaw. Aaron. Take me a couple of days to cut my stock out of the herd. Just make sure that he keeps his pet Indians away from camp until then. Go on, get out of here. Still got some of that good French champagne. I, I think a celebration's in order, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure is. Don't worry about Murray. He's just an unpleasant man. Unpleasant? That's a mild word for it. What 
makes him hate me. It's irrational. It's, it's become a disease with him. Are you afraid of him, Marin? Yes. I guess I am. Well, you don't have to be from now on out. The world is full of Murrays. All my life, each time I've met him, each place, I've been scared of all of them. Well, that was before. Yeah. Come on, let's get this champagne. If you don't mind, I'll be along in just a minute. Anything you say. why you should leave them. And you are not like they are. My father was once. I can learn. To live within walls, behind locked doors, where you cannot feel and smell the change of the wind, you would wither and choke on bitterness. I am not an Indian. You are more Indian than you are white. The men who were just here, they know that. I hate you for it. He wants to kill you for helping the Paiute. He would have to kill my husband first. You have no husband. You must have heard what Hoss Cartwright said to his father. I heard. But I did not hear you. Then hear me now. He is to be my husband. Do not forget the prophecy. talk to him. You gotta know what to say. 
Hey, how's the shoulder? You ready to go for that ride? <laughs> ride? Yes, ride. After two weeks indoors, I'm raring to go. Well, good. Let's go. Come on. Well, we'll deliver the cattle tomorrow. There's a big box canyon back up north of here. I'll put them in there so they won't get mixed up with your horses. She will be your, your woman? Yeah. My wife. It is hard to think she will leave my people. Well, she won't ever be any farther away than she has been the last couple of weeks. Very far away. A strange land to her. She does not belong there. She can belong there. No. Your people hate her. We believe she has been touched by the spirits. She told me all about the prophecy, but maybe if she's married to a white man, it will come true. It will find her. Until then, I wonder if she would be happier with those who dishonor her or with those who love her. I love her, Baron. His crew is going to take uh, some picked men and go pay the Paiutes a visit. He knows where that camp is, boy. I better get out there. Right. Uh, Candy, you and I will ride out to Murray's place. If he's not there, we'll meet you at the camp. All right, I'll get my things. I'll get your horse. Right. Maybe you better stay here. The Paiute wouldn't be there, hostile one for me. Count four. Four men, four rifles, and bullets to waste. Until you came, we were three. Only two rifles. Now we are five, and we have four rifles. We'll have two more pretty soon, Paul and Candy. If they are not here soon, they may find only bodies. Yeah, I know what you mean. If they got one man up on that high country up there, they'd have us right in their sights, wouldn't they? They will get one there. On the other hand, if one of us got up there, we'd have them in the same position, wouldn't we? I'm going to try for that ring. Us! Us! Us, they'll kill you. That's what they're trying to do now. You stay here. Us! care for him, Baron. I could have written for help. He would not let you do that. I think he fears the prophecy. I think you also fear it. That's why you left the Sioux and the Paiute, because no, of it. No, I do not fear it. The prophecy was an old man's muttering. It has no more meaning than the wind. Don't don't say. I'm going to divert their fire. You 
，必须得过呀。Squaw gonna tell me what to do. He wants my weapons to be buried with me. Well, he, he's going to have to wait a long time, because you're going to be all right. You hear? Don't waste precious time. Oh. <sighs> oh. I'm going to take you back home. You hear? I can't, I can't go back there without you. I, I can't go back alone. She's gonna run off and leave me. Now I wish to God she had. Bring a top price. There's a shortage of good saddle stock around here. Well, uh, that's good. Nice to know we're going to make a profit. Well, if it's all right with you, we'll uh, have the auction day after tomorrow. That'll give me time to get the handbills down. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll take care of the handbills. Hey, yeah. Paul's got a good friend here in town that's in the printing business. 
All right. Day after tomorrow, then. All right, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Well, how soon can we get started? Well, I thought we could get over to the hotel and get cleaned up. Have ourselves a meal that hasn't been cooked over a campfire. Yeah, well, look, we, we've got three hours of daylight left. If we started right away, we can get to the Ponderosa by Friday. We, we start moving that herd. On Monday, right after the Saturday night dance. He read our minds. Yeah, he's getting pretty good at it. Of course, he's had a lot of practice. What about it? Ah, sure. sure. Go ahead. Good deal. Hey, and uh, say hello to the widow Manning for me, will you? <laughs> your question the other day. We just stopped by to get your answer. I told you then and I'll tell you now the answer is no. The lady says she hasn't changed her mind. You had a whole week to think about it. I was sure you'd be seeing the light by now. Now she's told you she ain't changed her mind. Why don't you let her alone? Hey. I wouldn't. You might get hurt. Mrs. Manning? Ben. Ben Cartwright. What are you doing in Gunlock? Well, I uh, came here to make a little business with pleasure. First of all, to say hello to an old friend, <laughs> and then to order some handbills. The lady's busy. Why don't you take a walk and come back later? <laughs> You better not do that, Mr. Cartwright. You might mess up that bandage. Huh? Oh, it's not too bad, is it? Nasty bruise. Small concussion. Sure, I'd like to know who those two were. Later on, eh, Mr. Cartwright? Now, if any dizziness or nausea occurs, I want you to send someone for me at once. And I want you to spend the next 48 hours in bed, Mr. Cartwright. Oh. We'll see that he does. All right. This way out, ladies. Can't I talk to him for a moment? Well, certainly you can. Tomorrow morning. There's a bell on the table if you want anything. Oh, I'll be all right, thank you. I was, uh, I was looking for my hat. It's right over there. Oh, thank you. Dr. Adams said you were to stay in bed for at least... At least 48 hours, but he was being overcautious. Oh, is uh, Mrs. Manning up? Up and gone hours ago. Oh, well, then I'll see her at the clarion. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You gotta eat. You gotta keep your strength up. You wouldn't want all this food to go to waste. Hmm, well, you, uh, <laughs> you make it almost impossible for me to refuse. Mrs. Manning says you were her best man when she and Willard were married. Yes, that's right. Ruth has been running the paper for three years now. She works much too hard. Hmm. I have the feeling that she'd be lost without the clarion. 
That's what she says. But I know better. Ruth has had more than her share of trouble. What kind of trouble? It ain't right for a housekeeper to say, Mr. Cartwright, but if you're the friend I think you are, you'll see that she gets a lot of help. Well, Mr. Dobbs, just where are you going? Oh, I'm going to work, same as usual. You feeling all right? Sure. You don't look so good to me. Kind of green, sickly. Be a good idea if you went home and went to bed. As green as you look, if you go to work now, you might not get through the day. Maybe you're right. You got the word, huh? One scared little man. Just pack up and leave as fast as you can. Call for a drink. Come on. All right, turn around. You're under arrest. Hand over your guns. I don't see any star on you. Yeah, no marshal's badge either. This is a citizen's arrest. I hand over your guns. Come on. Come on. Mister, you're making a big mistake. Let's move to the sheriff's office. All right, move. How you doing, Sheriff? Howdy. Took these off Montana Slim. Man spends his life at crooked gambling. You think he'd do a better job of mocking cars, wouldn't you? <laughs> what can I do for you two? Well, the man says we're under arrest. He's holding a gun on us to prove it. The devil he is. I know Walt Leak, Jeff Cotton. I didn't catch your name. Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. Thought I was a law around here, Mr. Cartwright. Since you're doing my work for me, maybe you better tell me what this is all about. Assault and battery, trespassing and destruction of property. This assault, who's it on? Me and a couple of others. You willing to sign a complaint? That's why I'm here, Sheriff. All right. Your turn. What do you two got to say? Nothing. Except he's wrong. He sure is. Well, there you are. Two against one. You take this to court, the judge will throw it right out in the street. Sheriff, I have witnesses. Do what the man wants, Sheriff. Let Judge Tabor decide who's telling the truth. It's your fault. It's not hard. I'm wearing my nerves on the outside of my skin. I got page two locked up. We'll have to change that. Two of the ads have been canceled. Kelly's Mercantile and... The Eagle Saloon. You knew about that? I guess. Well, Leek was waiting on the sidewalk this morning and told me to go home. That's the reason I was late. I went around back so they wouldn't see me come in. After yesterday, I can hardly blame you. Yes, sir. You're supposed to be in bed. The doctor I said... Know, I, I know what the doctor said, but right now I need both you and Henry in court in exactly ten minutes. In court? But why? Well, I'm signing a complaint against Cotton and Lee. They're going to stand trial. I need you both as witnesses. 
I guess you better get your hat, Henry. Well, you, you two don't need me. I mean, the two of you will be enough. We do need you. Three will be better than two. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You always did face trouble head on. Well, Ruth, I just can't let those two get away with it. It isn't only those two. I guess Henry doesn't want to testify. Why not? Because he's afraid. They're trying to take the clarion away from me, Ben. That's what this is all about. Who's trying? The man who owns just about everything else in Gunlock. You'll meet him in a few minutes. Circuit Court, Gunlock County. Now in session. Judge Seth Tabor presiding. Well, everybody's here. I guess we can get this little matter cleared up. Mr. Lee? My partner and I are trying to buy the clarion. No secret about that. Mr. Cotton stepped into the back shop to take a look at the equipment. I did shake hands with the little feller. Maybe I squeezed too hard, but I didn't mean to hurt him. Mr. Cartwright walked in in the middle of things, and he didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I slipped and grabbed this case, and it fell down, and uh, the next thing I know, this Cartwright's trying to kill me. <laughs> Cartwright went pure loco. <laughs> He uh, knocked Mr. Cotton down and then tried to draw on him. <laughs> Mrs. Matting, had both these gentlemen made you an offer for the clarion? Yes, and I told them... You answered my question. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, did you knock Mr. Cotton down? Yes, I did. <laughs> and did you draw on him? No, I did not. Oh, I see. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion on that point. However, it appears to the court that there was no real harm done. That the cause of the trouble was... was an accident and misunderstanding. The court finds the defendants innocent of all charges. However... As a gesture of goodwill, Mr. Cotton and Mr. Leake are willing to pay for all damages, including... Mr. Tabor, there was no accident. Mr. Cotton deliberately pushed that type down onto the floor. Dobbs was the only one close enough to see what happened. If it happened like you said, why didn't you bring him along to testify? Well, Mr. Cartwright? He didn't wish to testify. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Tabor. Because he's afraid of those two thugs of yours. Mrs. Manning, this is a court of law. You'll speak when asked to only. These two couldn't even afford to buy a notebook, let alone a newspaper. <laughs> they work for you. Mr. Cartwright! I find you in contempt of court. That will be $20 or 20 days. Yes, you're absolutely right, Mr. Tabor. Contempt is what I feel. $40 or 40 days. Yes, sir. Fine turnout today, Ben. One of the best I've ever had. The men who own the big ranches are here. They need horses and can't afford to pay for them. You should do very well. Mr. Cartwright. I didn't expect you to still be around. Mr. Tabor, I've got some horses up for auction here. Oh, I see. The handle says 10 a.m., Mr. North, and it is now 5 after. Time to get started. <laughs> well, I guess it's time. Gentlemen, ladies, it's my pleasure to offer at auction 10 of the finest horses we've seen in Gunlock in a long, long time. All right, let's show them how that black beauty moves. Well, there's our first offering, that handsome black gelding, a prime example of Ponderosa bred saddle stock. Now, there's a real stockman's horse, fast, nimble. One dollar. 
I haven't asked for a bid yet, Mr. Tabor, but if I had, you have to be joking. I'm not joking. I bid one dollar for that black gelding. All right, I have a dollar bid. Well, in spite of what Mr. Tabor says, a one dollar bid for that fine animal has to be a joke. Come on, gentlemen, let's be serious. You know that horse would be a bargain for a hundred dollars. All right, who'll open the bidding at 75? Do I hear 75? Sixty-five. Sixty. Fifty-five. I bid one dollar. Either get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Mr. Tabor, you can't be serious. You advertise these horses for sale at auction to the highest bidder. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'll get a higher bidder or sell me that horse. Who'll give 55? $50. Do you want to tell him or do you want me to? That's right. A man puts something up to be sold at auction. He can't bid on it himself. Unlock county law. How long has this law been in this thing? Oh, long, long time. More than two years. And if the lady has any idea of bidding for you, she better have the money in her purse. Yep. Cash in the barrel head. That's the law, too. Have a dollar bid. One dollar. Going? Going? Mr. Tabor for one dollar. Bring out the rest of them. I'm in a horse buying mood. I knew about that auction law, but I had no idea that Tabor would use it the way he did. It's not your fault. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry. You bred and raised those beautiful horses, brought them all the way up here. Tabor stole them. Oh, he, he bought them. Oh, I admit that a dollar a head could be considered robbery, but it's legal and binding. Oh, Ben, why did they do this? Oh, oh. Oh, easy now, easy. I didn't mean to cry. I don't want to cry. I won't cry. Well, it might do you good to cry. You'd have had to swear, and I doubt if you have enough words for that. Living here in Gunlock and running the clarion, you'd be surprised at the words I know. You sure that Tabor's responsible for this? I know he is. Ordered it to be done while he and Cotton and Leek and that tame sheriff of his were at the auction where everyone could see them. So you know, but you can't prove, huh? I know or suspect a lot of things about Mr. Tabor I can't prove. Why does he want the clarion? Because he wants everything he can get his hands on. Every ranch, every freight wagon, every stick of lumber. <laughs> Henry, what happened? Hmm. Who did it? Nobody, ma'am. I just sort of stumbled and fell out in the street. Look at this. Good type thrown all over the floor. Anybody who did this ought to be tarred and feathered. I'm right. Sorry, ma'am. Look, the reason I come is I just got word that my brother's mortal sick. I gotta leave Gunlock, ma'am. It's all right, Henry. I understand. You, uh, want your pay. Oh, ma'am, if it wouldn't trouble you, it sure'd help me out. Of course. Right away. I hope your brother gets well soon. Me too, ma'am. Thank you very much. Much obliged. It's 
the end of the paper. Well, we'll get another printer. I've had six printers in the last four months. You know, one of the printers didn't stay long enough to even say hello. Some of Mr. Tabor's friends met him at the stage. Well, I've got newspaper friends in San Francisco and Virginia City. No, Ben. Even if I wanted to go on, I couldn't. When a person dies, there's a funeral, a eulogy, mourners. A newspaper dies. Nothing. Well, the clarion isn't dead. For me, it is. When Willard was alive, it was read and respected. Now, the advertising, the circulation's gone. I've poured three years of trying. I, I, I have nothing more to give. Well, you're tired and it's been a hard day, huh? We'll talk about it again tomorrow. No. Mr. Tabor's won the war. He can have the clarion. But for a price. He'll have to pay well for what he wants. Do you want Tabor to have the clarion? No. But I haven't the strength or the money to fight him. Oh, I know. You're going to offer to lend it to me because you knew Willard and because we're all friends. No, Ben. Mm -mm. I'm very tired and all I want to do is rest. Well, what I was thinking... You know, how would it be if I were to try to sell the clarion for you? I mean, I think I'd probably drive a much harder bargain than you could, you know? Would you trust me for that? Of course I trust you. Yeah, that's a good idea. And right now, I'm going to take you home. Get some of that red thing done. Come on. Cashier's check for the full amount. That's much more than I ever thought Seth Tabor would pay. Oh, then you're pleased. More than pleased. I'm wildly happy. <laughs> this calls for a celebration. <laughs> Coffee and rum cake. Cake that won the blue ribbon at the county fair. That'll do you both good. Ruth hasn't been eating enough to keep a bird alive. And Mr. Cartwright's been staying at the hotel where the food would choke a goat. I think we're being summoned. I think so, too. But first of all, you've got to sign this bill of sale. As for the buildings and the equipment, and, of course, the goodwill is signed right there. Goodwill? <laughs> There's not much of that left. Oh, a lot more than you think. Mm -hmm. There we are. Good. I can start packing now. Yes, you can. Oh, thank you. You're, uh, gonna leave Gunlock? Yes. And I'm glad to go. With Willard gone and the paper gone, I... I can hardly wait to leave. Thank you for making it possible. My pleasure. An old friend. A good friend. There's no one else like you. already at the depot. I walked down there myself just to be sure the Draven didn't forget. It really wasn't necessary. Well, I like to be sure. Now, you look up my cousin Ellie in Sacramento. Of course, the very first thing. Ellie knows everybody, and she'll see to it that you... Good morning. You think for one moment. Ben Cartwright, you lied to me. About what? You told me Seth Tabor was going to buy the clarion. Well, actually, you, uh, you told me that. I just didn't correct you. Deliberate evasion, and that's the same thing as a lie. Oh, oh no. 
Ben, the Calarian's dead. There are no subscribers, no advertisers. I could at least persuade myself to let Tabor pay for the bits and pieces of what he destroyed, but I cannot take money from you. <laughs> well, Ruth, you already have. The only thing that's left is the name out front. Tabor, Tabor has this whole town terrified. They're, they're even afraid to read the clarion. Well, I'm going to try to change that. You're going to? How? You don't know the first thing about running a paper. Ruth! The stage will be leaving in a few minutes. All right, I'll be there in a minute. In two minutes. You know, I'll never understand it. Any man who owns a pencil thinks he can run a paper. Ruth, they're loading passengers. The stage will be leaving. All right. Let it go. What about your trunk? Well, take it off. I'm going to help. Well, I, I, I couldn't ask you to do that. You didn't. I volunteered. Well, you may not want to when you find out what I've been doing. Now, Ruth, here's a copy of the first page of the paper that you were going to put out. Here's a headline. Jeb Anderson builds a new barn. Uh, the Hermione Ladies Club is having a box social. Not exactly earth-shattering. It's local news. I spelled all the names correctly. It's the first rule. People like reading about themselves. Well, I've written a new headline. Henry? Yeah, here it is, Mr. Cartwright. I set it up in tight and ran off a proof. Thank you. Honey. I guess it wasn't your brother who was mortal sick. It was the clarion. Well, now that you have a man editor, you think it has a chance to live. Well, no offense to you, ma'am, but if it don't, it's going down fighting. What do you think, Ruth? Ben, you can't print that. There are libel laws. Seth Tabor will sue you for everything you own and get it. Truth? is an unassailable defense against a libel suit. You sound exactly like Willard. No, well, I should. It was Willard told me that. Yes, sir. If you've got the story, I'll set yes, it up tight sure and run it off. Story? Can I read that? Corruption, malfeasance, and dishonesty were demonstrated in the Court of Justice of the Peace, Seth Tabor. Well, I must say, Ben, you don't beat around the bush. Newspaper man. Ha! You don't even know how to spell. Gently now, gently. Yeah. Good type is like a fine woman or a spirited horse. They both need gentle handling. Didn't know you're a horseman. I'm not. The man who taught me was. What he told me, I'm passing on to you. All right. Gently does it then. There's a notice tacked on the post office wall. Hmm? All government land in Gunlock County will be open to homesteaders 60 days from today. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's, that's almost two-thirds of the country. That's over a million acres. Oh, from Washington. Addressed to the editor, the clarion. Oh, would you open it, please? copy of the same announcement. What's the letter say? Washington would like it printed on the front page of every newspaper within a thousand miles of Gunlock County. The land commissioner in charge will be named later. Hmm. Pretty important job for somebody. Whoever he is, he'll be the most powerful man in this part of the country. If he's not the most honest, he'll be the richest, too. That's why Tabor wants a clarion. So he can...
can use it to get himself appointed land commissioner. I sent a telegram to Washington. I've got a friend there who might be able to help. I'm bringing in men to homestead these claims and to do the assessment work. And then uh, sell them to you? For a dollar each, yes. Dollar a section for land. It's better than buying horses for a dollar a head. If that's your idea of a joke, Mr. Leake, I don't like it. Now, Sheriff Knox's holdings will be here. Mr. Cotton's will be here. And Mr. Leake's, if Mr. Leake is still with us, will be here. Now, between us, we'll control the water in this whole wide area. And having the water, we'll control another 10,000 acres of fine grazing land. If you're appointed land commissioner. Oh, I will be, Mr. Leake, before the week is out. Hey, Mr. Tabor's got friends in Washington taking care of that for him. Mm-hmm. And who's going to take care of Cartwright? Why does that concern you, Mr. Leake? Because Cartwright owns the clarion now. And he's carrying a ten-horse grudge. And he just might use it to wreck your pretty little wagon. Don't bet on it, Mr. Leake. <laughs> Come on, the fire's out. Let's go. Get these buckets back. Thanks for your help. Glad to help out. Better, Dobbs? Much, thanks. <sighs> All that work, gone. Oh, and what have I done to you? It's not the end of the world. Not yet. Don't you see? We can't. There's just no way. I got the wagon loaded. I went over to the livery stable to get the team, and when I got back, the wagon and the papers was burning like fury. Oh, forget it. It's all over now. Thank you, ma'am. I needed this. Mr. Leake tells me you had an unfortunate accident here, a fire. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tabor. Oh, we lost a few papers, but uh, we'll survive. Come in. Yes, well, at the auction, I did get angry, and for very good reason, I believe. But I did. I did take advantage of you. And I'm here to make that right. I'll pay you whatever you say your horses are worth, Mr. Contract. Well, you've already paid me, Mr. Tabin. As you yourself pointed out, the transaction is legal and binding. One hundred dollars a head. I'm afraid the transaction is closed. All right, Mr. Cartwright. We'll forget the horses. But Gunlock does seem to be in a lucky town for you. Until now. Tomorrow will be much better. I'll give you a large profit on a short-term investment. I'll buy the clarion at four times what you paid Mrs. Manning. Four times? Mm-hmm. Why? So you can use it to uh, make sure that you're appointed land commissioner? The job calls for a man who knows the problems of Gunlock County, and I do better than any man alive, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> I should think you do. You created most of them. Yeah, you sure did. You know, you run Gunlock County like it was your own private kingdom. Mr. Cartwright, if you or the clarion try to stop me, your next of kin will regret it. I suggest you read tomorrow's edition. I already have. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I never should have let him get a look at this. It's all right, Henry. It certainly is. Henry, lock up that press. We've got a paper to put out. Hi, 
I thought I told you to keep an eye on the Clarion. Cotton's watching it. It doesn't take two to watch one building. Besides, something you ought to know. I saw half a dozen men carrying around pieces of that paper. Folks around here want to know what was in it that got it burned. You think that bothers me? It should. There was a lot about you on page two. It tells how you got your start driving one of Ace of Butter's freight wagons. How you got to be wagon boss, then partner, how you bought the freight line from Ace's widow. After Asa hanged himself. That part was news to me. That's only part of the story. The smallest part. Cartwright is getting to be a nuisance. What did you expect? You find him for contempt, you stole his horses, and you burned his papers. So I did. If you'd let him get a decent price for his horses, he would have been long gone by now, and you would have owned the clarion. We all make mistakes, Mr. Leake. The difference between us is that I don't worry about it. I'll still own the clarion. I don't see how. There's a lot you don't see. Without Cartwright here, I'd be taking a helpless widow's last possession. Even men who know better would side with her. Oh, Cartwright. He owns timber, cattle, horses. The biggest ranch in Nevada. You no know, people enjoy seeing a big man cut down. It's human nature. When I take Cartwright apart, all of Gunlock County will stand up and cheer. It'd be a good trick if you can do it. I can, and I will. Yeah, a bullet would stop him. But it would also get you hung for murder. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The only way I see is to burn that whole building. Press, paper, type, and all. Mr. Leake, there's some hope for you yet. Sometimes you do fall over the obvious solution. <laughs> Thank you. Purdy, it's nice to see you again. Has been a while. Too long. It's too late to get your ad in tomorrow's clarion. Next week will be fine. Pretty. Gunlock Mercantile. He wants to run a half-page ad every week. Oh, good. Yeah. Pretty was only the first. Next came Hob Kelly. Kelly's livery stable came in and bought an ad. Bought something. He left money on the counter. All right. Mr. Lake, I guess we're going to do it your way. Cotton, you stay here. Knox and I will give you a hand. Three of us will be left. so happy before. What changed you? After what happened to the last issues, I'm wondering if these papers will get to the post office, the stage. They will. We're going to load them right outside the front door in broad daylight where everybody can watch. and light your fire. Do what I tell you, Mr. Lee.
Well, now, we'll take Cartwright over to the jail, and it'll be a legal killing for trying to escape. No, Mr. Tabor. Oh, Sheriff, now you cooperate, and you'll have leaks land in your own. You'll be a very wealthy man. Well, if there's nothing else, Mr. Cartwright, I guess we'll head home. Fine. You have a good night's nice rest, Henry. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Well, these will go to the president and the cabinet members. They get them. Oh, they will. Have you had an answer to your telegram? No. I'm afraid Mr. Tabor has that telegraph operator under his thumb. I don't think that message is ever sent. I was afraid of that. But these papers will get there. I'll take them to the post office in the morning myself. See that they're stamped and put in the mail bag. Mr. Tabor wants a government job. I don't think he's going to interfere with the mails. What was that? me. You. Bad blood between you. He gave you a lump on the head, so you split his skull open with a pistol butt. Killed him. Speak up, Sheriff. Tell him. You're under arrest. Murder. Hand it over. Court, you know. Any court, not even yours. Get him. Get him! Move! Drop those guns. <laughs> well, ma'am, you better drop your gun. You're helping a murderer to escape, and that's a felony, ma'am. Drop it. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll drop it, all right. It wasn't my idea, Mr. Cartwright. It wasn't my idea at all. never were any bullets in that rifle. I'm terrified of loaded guns. No, no goodbyes. I, I hate goodbyes. So do I. But I do what? And no thank yous. I hate thank yous. All right, but I'll have to bite my tongue. I do, too. But you have the Ponderosa, and I have the Clarion. As a favor, can't we keep in touch this time? Of course. I'll write you regularly. And of course, I'll be keeping in touch with you regularly, because I'll be reading the Clarion, which I'll be reading every Wednesday when it comes to mail. <laughs> 